truth be told, 2007 was probably one of the easiest years we've done so far to find worst matches for. And why is that? Well, dear viewer, because this was the first year that the Great Kali got a main event push. India's least mobile man debuted for the company the year before, but 2007 saw him win the World Heavyweight Championship and then famously hold it upside down, casting a dark shadow over SmackDown in the process. But don't worry, we're not here just to rag on Carly, there's plenty of other rubbish wrestling that happened in 2007 too. However, it will mostly be Carly. You have been warned. I'm Adam Pacisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE matches of 2007. Join us. Number 10. The Divas Battle Royal at SummerSlam Thankfully, Carly wasn't anywhere near this 12-woman elimination match at SummerSlam 2007, although he was probably the only thing that could have made this display even worse. Women from across three WWE brands all fought to throw each other over the top rope and earn a shot at Candice Michelle's Women's Championship. Whoops, did I say over the top rope? Well, no, this is the era where women only needed to go through the ropes to be eliminated from Battle Royals. This contest is full of some of the finest talent the women's division had to offer in the mid-noughties. Gillian Hall, anyone? How about Crystal? Remember Brooke from Extreme Expose? No, of course you don't. Stop lying. Eliminations were as sloppy as they were quick, as the whole thing was won by Beth Phoenix in just over seven of the longest minutes of your life. At least a credible wrestler actually came away with the victory, but watching most of the other performers happily flail about was a stark reminder of the state of women's wrestling in WWE at the time. Number 9. Deuce and Domino vs Jimmy Snooker and Sergeant Slaughter at Vengeance Night of Champions Deuce and Domino will go down in history as… actually, they probably won't go down in history at all. Anyway, a pair of greasers, because WWE always has its finger on the cultural pulse, this duo were WWE Tag Team Champions for over four months. That is longer than Los Guerreros held the same titles across two different reigns, and they weren't cosplaying as Danny Zuko. It didn't exactly help their credibility that one of the T-Birds' few pay-per-view title defenses was against two men with an average age of 61. Jimmy Snooker and Sergeant Slaughter challenged for the titles after Deuce and Domino disrespected fellow legends Rick Martel and Tony Gurria, who were sat at ringside. The Sarge took a few bumps in the match, but as for snooker, he could barely walk. When it came to their offense, it looked about as effective as trying to eat soup with a fork. There is the nice little tidbit that snooker was Deuce's real-life father. However, that's the only nice thing we can think to say about this disaster. Or Superfly, for that matter. Number 8. The Great Carly vs. Batista vs. Kane at the Great American Bash Here he is, folks, the man of the hour, the guest of honor, the gift that just keeps on giving. Carly is here, and he's dragging two legends down with him. Just two days after winning the World Heavyweight Championship, the big man put the gold on the line against two other big men, Batista and Kane. Fans watched on in horror as two of SmackDown's biggest stars had to sell the slow bumbling offense of the new champion. The best Carly could manage was a pair of choke slams, but the rest of his attacks consisted solely of punches, clotheslines, and looking confused. Things picked up significantly when the two challengers put Carly through the announce table and wrestled each other for a few minutes. But this comparative bliss didn't last long as Carly got himself back in the ring and pinned Kane to retain the gold. This match is actually made worse by the brief one-on-one -on -one section. Fans got a glimpse of what a decent title match could have been only for it to be snuffed out by the return of the walking concrete slab. Not only that, but Carly won, obviously, meaning that his title reign would continue. Oh joy. Number 7. Melina vs. Ashley at WrestleMania 23 Today, we have epic blood rivalries and grand storyline quests for the ladies of WWE. However, back in the day, a WrestleMania women's feud could be started over something as simple as the cover of Playboy. 2005 Diva Search winner 
Senator Ashley Mazzaro graced the publication's front page in early 2007, much to the chagrin of women's champion Melina. This led to a Lumberjill match for the title at WrestleMania 23 that was so important that it was nearly cut for time. Gotta give those minutes to Vince McMahon getting his head shaved, I suppose. It feels really wrong to criticize Mazzaro considering that she had a horrible time in the company, but she could not wrestle well despite her best efforts. At the time, Melina was hardly a ring general either, so the match was very clunky and botchy. The Lumberjills barely had any impact on the action and were only there to brawl with each other after Melina got the win in under four minutes. Also, this was the only women's match on the entire card. And hey, if you can believe it, this isn't the most embarrassing thing that happened to Melina on pay-per-view in 2007. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Number six, Finley and Hornswoggle versus The Boogeyman and Lil Boogeyman at No Way Out. He's a worm eating, woo, clock smashing, woo, Booker T scaring, woo, legends contract receiving son of a gun. He is the boogeyman. And he's rubbish, sorry. After lying about his age during the million dollar tough enough, Marty Wright got signed to WWE anyway and debuted as the Boogeyman in 2005. In 2007, Boogie was feuding with Finlay after the Irishman and his helper Hornswoggle ended his undefeated streak. That's right, the Boogeyman had an undefeated streak. Impressive one too. To counteract the little bastard, which is what WWE actually called him at the time, Boogie recruited a little person of his own creatively named the Lil Boogeyman. The pairs faced off at No Way Out in a tag team match. The bits where Finley and Boogeyman wrestle each other are fine, I suppose, but the rest is a bunch of worm-based shenanigans until Finley absolutely womps Lil Boogeyman with a shillelagh for the win. The match just drags and drags and drags, replaying the same tired jokes that weren't even especially funny to begin with. Oh well, at least they only did this match once, eh? Wait a second, they ran it back a few months later, and then Lil Boogeyman got crushed by Mark Henry. I give up. Number 5. The Great Carly vs. Kane at WrestleMania 23 Sometimes one memorable spot is enough to save a match. Sadly, this is not one of those matches. Raw's Carly and SmackDown's Kane battled each other in this interpromotional dream match at WrestleMania, although it was more like one of those dreams you have if you eat too much cheese before bed. The lone highlight of this dismal affair was Kane picking up his enormous opponent and planting him with a body slam. Not only was this an impressive physical feat from the Big Red Machine, but it also mirrored Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant 20 years earlier, although this move didn't nearly have the same effect. Carly recovered quickly from the spot and took Kane down for the win. Aside from the slam, Carly took barely any offense from his opponent, essentially making this a glorified squash match on the grandest stage of them all. Nobody wanted to see Kane get his ass handed to him like this, especially not by somebody who could barely stand up straight, let alone wrestle. That being said, this is Carly's best ever singles match at WrestleMania. Granted, it's his only singles match at WrestleMania, but still. Number 4. Batista vs. The Great Carly at SummerSlam. After failing to win the gold at the Great American Bash, Batista once again stepped up to Carly at the following month's SummerSlam. Only this time, he didn't have Kane to help him. This left the animal fully at the mercy of Carly's god awful attacks, plodding movements, and lackluster pin attempts. The giant could barely get down to the mat with any conviction, let alone make a satisfying cover. And what was the crowd's reward for sitting through this turd sandwich? Did they see their beloved hero finally? conquer his gigantic foe. No, this match ended in a DQ when Carly hit Batista with a chair. Can he hit me with a chair too, so I'd have to watch or think about this match ever again? Not only was this a world championship match on the second biggest show of the year, but it was also the semi-main event. This was the bout that was supposed to get fans amped up for the big finale. Instead, all it did was make people curse the day they first discovered pro wrestling and curse the fact that they were born with functioning eyes. Number 3. Batista vs. The Great Carly at No Mercy how do you make one of the worst SummerSlam matches of all time even worse? You shove it in a big bamboo cage, that's how! Batista thankfully ended Carly's world title reign at Unforgiven, although he had to get help 
from Rey Mysterio to do so. Unfortunately for fans of Being Happy, their rivalry continued to the following month's No Mercy. To tip the odds in his favor, Carly announced that the match would take place under a certain stipulation, a stipulation that has already appeared in this series and will most likely be appearing again. It is, of course, the Punjabi Prison. Big Dave and Big Carl's clashed inside the giant wooden structure that made it almost impossible to see the ring. Actually, this was a blessing in disguise as the action inside said ring was sewage grade poor. Not only did the prison limit what each man could do, but the match also went on for 14 entire minutes. That's way longer than any of Carly's other matches on this list, and boy did it show. The one redeeming feature of this contest was that Carly didn't win. At least we can be thankful for that. Number 2. Candice Michelle vs Melina at One Night Stand Oh Melina, what did you do to deserve this? And Candice Michelle too, and everyone who had to watch this grotesque display from One Night Stand 2007. How did WWE think that they could top the previous two One Night Stand events? The shows that saw the rebirth of ECW and Rob Van Dam finally winning the WWE title. That's right, by having two women roll around in pudding for three minutes. The two women thrashed about in the brown stuff to a stunned silence from both the crowd and the commentators. When even Jerry Lawler has nothing to say about a TNA women's match, you know that something's wrong. The closing spot, if you want to call it that, saw Michelle win the title after she forced Melina to tap while attempting to drown her in the pudding. I mean, if I could choose a way to go, that would be right up there. What else do you want me to say about this? It was disgusting, it was humiliating, it was disgraceful, and it simultaneously made me hungry and put me off my dessert. Number 1. Donald Trump vs Rosie O'Donnell on Raw Future President Donald Trump, which is still a weird thing to say, was engaged in a very public, very nasty war of words with actor Rosie O'Donnell over comments the latter had made regarding the former's marital history. Vince McMahon, a real-life friend of the Donald, tried to cash in on the media storm by booking a match between two impersonators on the January 7th, 2007 edition of Raw. From the moment that Vince introduced Rosie as being full of lesbianic rage, fans knew exactly what they were in for. What followed was several minutes of grandstanding, jokes about Rosie's weight, and Donald playing with his hair. You can count on one hand full of tiny fingers the number of actual wrestling moves in this match. It ended when Trump hit Rosie in the face with a fudgy the whale cake and pinned her with a second rope hair butt. A bad match seemingly designed to entertain Vince and Vince alone, this is easily one of the most self-indulgently awful matches in Raw's long history. Watching it makes you want to I don't know, bites Kenny Omega. Do you get it? Donald was played by a steal. The more you know.